قبل ثلاث أسابيع تقريبا عرضنا على هذه القناة حلقة عن ظاهرة جديدة منتشرة الآن في الغرب وهي اكتساح موجة هائلة من التشكيك في وسائل الإعلام والخطاب الرسمي وحتى الحكومات في الدول الغربية وهذا بسبب صدمة الكثير من الشباب مما يحدث الآن في غزة من مجازر ومسؤوليات حكومتهم المباشرة أو حتى غير مباشرة عما يحدث هناك وإلى درجة اعتناق بعضهم للإسلام استعرضنا في الحلقة عدة قصص لشباب بدأوا باكتشاف الإسلام والبحث عن القرآن ومحاولة فهم سبب هذا الصمود العجيب لدى سكان غزة أمام الموت وكان من بين القصص التي عرضناها قصة شابة أمريكية اسمها ماديسون وعرضنا فيديو لها وهي تبكي وتتحدث عن قصتها ومعاناتها ونيتها لاعتناق الإسلام وكانت تطلب أيضا في الفيديو مساعدة بعض المسلمين في منطقتها في فلوريدا فنحن أيضا قمنا بتكرار هذا النداء ولب الكثير من المتابعين مشكورين هذا النداء وأمطروا حسابها بالكثير من رسائل وتعليقات التشجيع والدعم وبعضهم أيضا اتصل بها وخلال ساعات ذهبت إلى مسجد في منطقتها ونطقت بالشهادة والحمد لله وعرضت أيضا صورتها بالحجاب على صفحتها ولا أخفيكم أني كنت أتوقع ذلك لذلك غطينا رأسها أثناء المونتاج في الحلقة لأن كنا نتوقع أنها سترتدي الحجاب قريبا ثم أرسلنا لها دعوة لتكون ضيفة على قناة السبيل فرحبت على الفور وقالت إنها ممتنة لمتابعي هذه القناة وإنها تريد أن تطل عليهم من هذا المنبر لذلك سوف تستضيف الآن الآنسة آيا زيدان من الدوحة وهي من المتعاونين معنا في القناة فتستضيف الأخت ماديسون في هذا الحوار الشيق والمفيد وسنسمع منها قصة إسلامها والكثير من التفاصيل المهمة أيضا عن وجهة نظر الشباب الأمريكيين عن الإسلام وأيضا وجهة نظرهم عن السياسة وعن سياسة بلدهم بشكل عام أعتقد أن الحوار سيكون مفيدا ومليئا بالتفاصيل المهمة والتي ينبغي أن نفهمها في حوارنا مع الآخر وتعاملنا معه وخصوصا في هذه المرحلة How are you? How's everything? I am wonderful. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm great. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah. Madison, your story. Wow, it went viral. Like in a day and it's light. I mean, mashallah. Uh, tell me, first of all, Madison, how do you feel converting to Islam and khalas, just wearing the hijab and becoming officially um a woman of islam please me it is an amazing feeling for so many reasons i feel um like i could go on about each little thing you listed number one the hijab i feel so beautiful never in my life have i felt this beautiful consistently every time i leave the house i just feel very confident i feel like i'm on a different level As for everything else, I'm just much happier. I feel like I have more of a purpose in my life, yeah. which is very nice. It's it's a little different than how I usually was before. So it's nice to have reason to improve myself. I agree. I agree with you, actually. The purpose and uh, having a cause in life actually makes the person, like him or herself, feel that... We are valuable, you know? We are living for something. We are fighting for something. We are um, doing something for something. That, that's gorgeous. Mati, um, uh, I would like to ask like a question also. Uh, what was like, there is a con, was there like a contrast in the treatment before and after you um, converted to Islam or announce your shahada? Um, surprisingly, yeah, okay, I knew there was going to be changes in the way people treated me. I guess I was a little bit shocked to find that people I know, but I'm not necessarily close with, treat me very differently. For example, I have, there's this person I've known for my whole life, and we've always been friendly, but recently on social media, I'm noticing he's sharing things trying to get me to react and i don't i am i truly believe that people can only upset you if you give them the power to do that and i i, I honestly do not want to give him the power to upset me so i just look at it and i'm like yep yeah, that was for me and i just keep scrolling a lot of Marshall. people see my change and for some reason, think that I'm a completely different person. 
I'm still the same person. I still have the same sense of humor. I'm still outspoken. I just dress a little bit differently and I follow more rules to make myself a better person. So I don't understand it, but I guess whatever. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. Standing for your uh, own thoughts, own beliefs is not easy. And it's not as easy as we thought or people think. But when you are in the situation and you deeply believe in your beliefs and your cause or your values, it's sometimes it's more fun to fight for your beliefs. It, it doesn't get easier, but it gets like more exciting to fight for it, you know, because you start reading, because you start knowing more about like uh, the belief that you are um, having or believing like in yourself. That's amazing. What, before you were hijab and convert to Islam, what kind of news sources you used to consume? And is it still the same uh, after uh, like you converted? Um. This might sound crazy for people who live in countries where the news is so distorted, but I feel like mm -hmm. myself and a lot of other Americans with empathy do not watch news. I don't watch TV, period, because it's very, they word things to try to get you to feel a certain way. And there's a news channel for this group of people and a news channel for this group of people. And they're both very biased and anybody with a brain knows that so it's just something that I have avoided I did anything that I see about the world comes from my phone on the internet and I would say that I've always cared about things that are happening in other countries to other people even if I'm not directly related to them in some way so when I did start to see what was happening in Gaza I knew that I was seeing what, I guess the American news did not want me to see because that's not what they yeah. were showing. People that I know who would watch like CNN or Fox News were very like shocked, both of them. Cause don't, okay, Fox News and CNN, they're like against each other. They're saying this, they're saying the opposite thing. So both of them, people that watch both were like, where are you getting your news from? And I, <laughs> It's crazy. I'm getting the news from the people that are actually there. So I don't know. Wow. That's imp that's impressive and interesting at, at the same time. All right. So um, I'm sure that you faced or you saw the, the double standards in the way that people treated you maybe before and after. Was it that clear? Was it very obvious? Did you like, for example, somebody from your family or your friends, someone who's close to you actually commented or like made you feel that, oh, you're treating me differently after I wore my hijab, like why? Did that happen? Did you face that? Um, Honestly, since it's been 21 days exactly since I've become Muslim and I have not seen my family in person. So I don't know how, I've seen my mom for maybe like two minutes, five minutes max, but I don't know how they're going to react. They have they haven't seen me yet, honestly. Our interaction has gone down a little bit, unfortunately. I don't know if maybe it's me not realizing I'm pushing myself away or maybe they're just uncomfortable, um, but I don't talk to them a lot. But I can say, just like walking around in the world, before, I was very average. Um, I looked like a regular American. I dressed the same as everyone else. No one yelled yeah. back eye at me. Um, you can't tell by looking at me, but I am a veteran. So if people found that out, they're like, oh, thank you so much for your service and, you know, kissing up to me and stuff like that. But now that I wear this, people will like <laughs> and I'm an, I'm an outgoing person so if you're going to stare at me I will also stare at you but I'm not going to be like rude about it I'll smile and then they're like oh I'm staring and then they'll smile back or they'll just continue to stare at me <laughs> but I'm like the perfect person for that I'm not offended 
you're confused. You don't know anything about me. You've heard horrible things about my religion. So all I can do is smile at you. That's amazing. Uh, medicine did like wear hijab and um, becoming a Muslim limited, for example, your activities, what you used to do, um, places you used to go and now not. And do you think this kind of change is positive or negative on your, in your life? Okay, so surprisingly enough, I my lifestyle has not changed very much. I've never been like a party person. I don't drink. I never smoke. I'm very, I don't know. I, my morals are the same. The only thing I can think of is I used to have a personal trainer and I used to go to the gym regularly. Um the clothes I was wearing in the gym are not suitable. So I have completely stopped going. I have been telling myself, oh, I'll start working out in my room. I do not do that. <laughs> but I can't say that my life is being negatively affected. I'm not being hindered from doing anything. My lifestyle was already pretty positive before. I mean, give or take some things I don't do anymore. Um, it's mainly in like the way I dress and I love music so that's a struggle for me too but if you're reading the quran you understand why you can't do certain things and it's sorry <laughs> there's a bug in here it's not very hard to be yeah. honest i don't feel like i'm sacrificing a huge part of myself so wow uh until this day and after like 21 and 21 days on your 22nd what is the biggest value that you learned or you got from becoming a Muslim or converting exactly? Appreciation. I am a serial complainer. I love to just say, oh, this is horrible. This is not going my way. I hate this. I am every day learning to be thankful, even in a situation that is not ideal. I try to put myself in the mindset like that okay, something not great is happening to me, but I woke up this morning. I had access to, you know, a, a hot shower. I don't want to go to work today, but I have a job. I can buy things for my child. And um, just trying to look at the positives in the situations that I typically would have been like, oh my gosh, this is the end of Becoming grateful and like the gratitude, I agree big time. That's one of the biggest things that the person learned. Even even the people who are like already was born Muslims, they learn by the time how to be very thankful and grateful for their lives. Because you know, now all the good things and the gifts from God like, are unlimited. And literally like only just see have the ability to see having eyebrows, lashes, um yeah. uh, like a, a beautiful face, healthy body, a house, a mattress. These all like these small details in the person's life they need to be grateful for. I, I told you that brings us actually uh, the gratitude and being grateful and thankful for what's happening now in Gaza. I'm sure that you are following up all the news, um, Madison, and here I want to just go back a little bit about the lifestyle. How did the Western lifestyle, specifically like in the USA, affect, affected you in terms of um, the awareness, the opinion, the vision, the point of view? Okay. Yes. Okay. So I feel like starting from a young age in school, I can't tell you exactly what was said or what was taught, but they definitely put it in our heads as Americans that we are the most important, the most influential group of people on this planet. Mm -hmm. There is no country greater than America. Everybody else is secondary. They don't straight out tell you that, but in the little things they sneak in the curriculum at school, it starts building up. And I grew up remembering or I grew up thinking that as an American, I am the most important. I'm. They don't teach you much about other countries. So you really don't have a choice but to 
think that America is like the capital of the world, which is not true. Absolutely, it is not true. And I don't remember when it clicked in my head that that wasn't true, but I remember I was a kid and I was like, the world is huge and we are not the center of it. I think I probably talked to somebody that wasn't from America and they kind of just like snapped me out of it. I was like, oh, wow, I am crazy to think that America is as important as they want me to believe. So I hope I hope that answers the question. It does. It does. Big time. I appreciate that. Um, that actually moves us to uh, something more specific there, which is in media. Um, you said you don't watch like a lot of televisions or like, uh, for example, the CNN or like the Fox News, etc. But what kind of news or media did you consume back then that you had or that completed the idea that the USA is the capital of the world? Beside the curriculum in the schools, did the media affect the way you think and look at the world? Yes. So in America, it doesn't matter how something happened. They will always go back and change it to fit the narrative that America is the hero. In every story, we are the hero. World War II, we were the ones who fixed that. We saved all of the Jewish people in World War II. I grew up thinking that. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I thought that for real. I was like, yeah, we went in there. We saved them. And I grew up, started reading, started looking into things on my own. And I was like, what? What? And um, even like school books, and I know you said moving past books, but like news and school books, they... Yeah. they change it they actually rewrite history and even people that were there are like okay yeah that makes sense i think americans are very like hive-minded in the sense that if you tell them something and you are a reputable source they're not going to question it oh see it was on cnn why would they lie because that's their job <laughs> that is their job they want us to feel like America would never hurt anybody. We are always the hero in every story. If we're killing people and it looks bad, there's a good reason. That's what they want us to think. And it is absolutely scary that it is. We are they have that power. And there's another example that's kind of unrelated kind of. It is very unrelated. But I am half African American. So my um descendants were slaves. And I knew I grew up learning about slavery of course it's horrible but they don't they don't get into the details of how horrifying slavery was and it was i did not know the extent the extent of the horrors of slavery until i was an adult and ugh, it is hard to think and how, how hard did you how did you reach uh like the knowledge of like the past because you see like i'm sure like your life was like very busy and i said like in the curricular schools even in uh the media news etc so how did you get to that point i can did you say... read it somewhere or like a family member told about it okay so a combination of both um i mm -hmm. have a family member it's my dad's uncle um and I'll probably talk a, a little bit more about him later if, if the subject mm -hmm. reaches it. But I found out that I'm not the only Muslim in my family. He was Muslim for eight years. I don't know if he still is. He was an imam. And I found this out and I was like, what? And he told me, yeah, my birth name was this, this, and this. But I changed it to Amin. And I'm just like, wait. <laughs> but anyway, he shared information with me about um, the city he was born and raised in, Detroit, Michigan. And how it was, um, a, it was a bustling, very um, financially prosperous location. And I think they, like, it had to do with, like, car sales. It was, like, a very big car yeah. area. And they were very prosperous and had a lot of money there. And it was, like, a very large black population. And they bombed that, that place. <laughs> and you don't hear about that. Like, it was shocking information to me that... They came in and destroyed Detroit, Michigan. Now, if you hear about Detroit, Michigan, 
you think of um, a very poor location that's dirty. There's a lot of drug addicted black people. They do it on purpose. They don't want um, certain groups of people to be successful. And he he was alive during that. So he was sharing the information with me and my jaw was on the floor. And then everything else that I've learned or had to unlearn and relearn was because of yeah. the internet. I think if I grew up in a time before, like for example, TikTok, I would not know half of the things that I do know about myself and my identity and my ancestors and the horrors that they went through. Very interesting. Yeah. Wow. That it's it's quite similar actually, uh, Madison, to what's happening right now in Gaza. If, if there are like similarities, you know, like bombing places and people and covering all this or like not giving or caring about these people and trying to hide um, uh, that, that, those days back then. And about like the war in Gaza and what's happening there, did you have like certain ideas? about Gaza before like the war and after the war and what are these all what were they and what they became okay so i have heard about that situation before uh, october 7th i believe i yeah I'm to to it. There. like just a second in the news like oh look at this horrible thing that's happening in palestine and then it's gone and then you don't hear about it again. I knew that there was conflict in that area. And I remember seeing videos and images about it. And I've seen protests and just much smaller than what it is now. Um, but to be honest, they don't, it wasn't talked about a lot. So I didn't know the extent. I'm going to be honest with you before um, October 7th, my information about it was limited. And then once I started to see what was happening, I did my research. I learned the history of how long this has been going on and just tried to spread information because I know if as somebody who is who cares about things like that, if I know that little, I know so many people who know nothing. So I felt like it was my job to share the information. And a lot of people were like, wow, if you weren't sharing this, I genuinely would not have seen these videos, these pictures. And why do you think Madison people, like there are a lot of people who like know nothing about uh, either the, like the conflict or the war on Gaza at the right moment? Why? So, like I said, in America, we like to cover things up and rewrite things. So if you want to learn something, like the actual um, situation, you need to yourself search for it. And I'm not trying to generalize. Yeah, I'm not trying to generalize Americans, but I feel like we don't like to do that. If you're not going to give me all of the information right in front of my face, where I could take it in in a very simple manner, I'm looking away. I don't care. So that's a lot of people. A lot of people do not care enough to look into it themselves. So I think it's very useful that they have journalists in Gaza that are posting videos and just nonstop yeah. posting, 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 because you're actually holding the attention of American people who always have looked away. And Americans and Westerns, Maddie, I, I agree big time. What do you think should happen to eye open all those people who like know nothing or like know the least about what's happening? What should be happening so it, it becomes like an eye open? Honestly, I know people personally in my own family who even still, as of like yesterday, were like, I don't know much about the situation. And I, and I credit that to laziness or maybe just they don't care enough to look into it. I'm not exactly sure what I can do to open their eyes. I, w I will sit there and I'll be like, this is what's happening. This is this, you heard this, but it's not true. This is actually how it went. And the person I was talking to about it is just looking at me like, are you done? Are you done talking now? Like, wow. I, I, I get it. Like, you care so much. Can we talk about what we're having for dinner? Or just, 
the lack of empathy for other people and just that, like, who can't relate to them is astounding yeah. and it's very common in american people or westerners i don't know i'm i've never i don't know i got you yeah there is actually like a, a strong connection, to be honest, between the lifestyle and what it made people become. Like they, in general, like like not specifically in the USA, but a lot of people, uh, they just want the simplest idea. They want to get the easiest way possible, uh, like the information or like the research or etc. So I I agree big time. So how do you feel towards paying taxes and working so hard day and night for your family and then a huge amount of money is been taken from like your pockets and it's being funded to another people it's a helpless feeling because even if you want to do something about it like you can say oh i don't want my money funding that there is no way we can stop it. it. The taxes come out of like our groceries. There's tax on everything. There's tax um, that comes out of every single dollar that you make at your job. They take the money out and there's no way you can say, actually, no, I'd rather pay for this instead. We have no say. So when somebody who's American um says, well, I, I don't, this situation doesn't affect me or I don't know much about it. It's a little bit insulting because we're paying for it. You should care about where your money goes, what it's funding. And it is a helpless situation. I can't physically go there and save lives. But what you can do is educate yourself, educate the people around you, advocate, maybe go to a protest. If that's not you, you can share posts. Just don't sit there and do nothing i feel like that's a very easy thing to do just to ignore it and i am sickened to watch people that typically care about other people not care about this yeah i um, that's that's actually interesting also Mandy, the, the thing that even education system healthcare is not easy very easy like in the USA or maybe like in other Western countries and seeing actually that even like even these essentials in life is not provided easy to us but it's becoming like easier um provided to like other people and maybe a country so yeah actually it's quite hard to be honest there was a woman in the protests in the USA for Gaza a march for Gaza and the board was saying you cannot defeat a nation that knows death is not the end how would you react to this what do you think of this i think it's um for me personally it is that is what islam is um you shouldn't fear death and me personally before i was muslim scared the the life out of me i would have panic attacks about dying i'm not kidding that is that was my number one fear not just like me passing away but me leaving my family or losing a family member and i feel like that is a huge comfort for me knowing that when i do pass it's the beginning instead of the end and this is so much worse than where i will be going when i pass away so i feel like that is kind of like what is what is the word I'm looking for? That's kind of like I don't know what I, what the word is. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that's directed towards other Muslims to see that and be like, Palestinians are a very strong group of people. You can kill them, but they're not going to die, and it's very powerful. And I feel like a lot of people are feeling that, and that's why a lot of people are looking towards Islam and are interested in it because they are not obviously it is painful to watch your family be lost and to lose everything in your life but they're not afraid to to die because they know what's waiting for them and each of them are guaranteed to go to heaven so i agree and um a quote that i love the most is that resistance is an idea and idea 
never dies. Like the ideas in our head never dies. It comes in back. So I I agree big time. All right. So Maddie, if there is like one thing you can change about people's thought, give me like a specific topic. Like I want you now to specify a topic, uh, maybe a situation you went through, or like uh, something that is uh, keeping your mind busy. And so what it would be and what would you like the people to think about it? I think if I could make everybody have universal empathy instead of selective empathy, where they care mm -hmm. about everybody instead of just certain groups of people. For example, Ukraine, when that war started and there were horrible things happening there, so many Americans were in shock and they were disgusted. And I feel like the media coming out of that wasn't even a fraction as terrifying and gut-wrenching and, and scary and terrible and saddening and depressing as what we are seeing come out of Gaza. And Americans were just like, so their arms were open, like, please bring them here. We'll save them. But the second the war started in Gaza, it's, well, what did they do to deserve it? Oh, it's a terrorist group. They're just trying to get rid of the terrorists. We don't care that they're taking out countless children and innocent people. And I don't understand how you can look at a video of a parent cradling the corpse of their child and not feel something from that even if you're not a parent that should hurt you that should disgust you but people pick and choose who they want to care about i feel like we should care about everybody and i wish i could grant that gift to everybody it hurts to care about people but it shows that you're human and if you see injustice happening in the world and you don't care you're missing something you're missing a soul and you should be ashamed of yourself wow. What do you think of this generation who is very stubborn, um, getting on the streets, marching? Like, I don't think that a country stops the march for Palestine or for Gaza. Like another country starts a march, you know, like another one in another country in different time zone. So how do you feel towards that? Our generation, people who are like young, but like have a cause or a value to fight for and resist for him. I personally have been to two protests for Gaza so far. Every time they announce a new one, I will be there. I'm hoping to, my friend texted me during this saying, do you want to volunteer? I'm going to say yes. I don't even care what it's for. I'm going to. But I think this generation, teenagers now too, because um, I'm 24. So I kind of, I am older. I feel a little bit older. I've been called old by a teenager before. Um, embarrassing but i still think of us as one um we're very vocal um our planet is being destroyed we get to go on our phones and watch genocide happen we get to see things that our parents and grandparents didn't have to see um i wouldn't say that they didn't get to see it we kind of have to I and mean, i think yeah. it's our job to look at it but it opened our eyes that okay your government can tell you everything's fine no just trust us we don't believe them in general i think the young people we don't we don't believe them we're seeing with our own eyes people who are there video recording actual genocide you cannot tell me that's not true i'm seeing it that's not ai that's not an ai generated image this isn't a lie like you cannot tell me that what is happening in Gaza is justified in any way. There is no brain use for what is happening. And I feel like a lot of young people feel the same way. We're watching it. I don't agree big time, Matt. Even even it, if it was like an AI made up video or like a picture, the young generation can tell that the right and wrong. So what I'm seeing right now, is it like even a right thing or like a wrong thing? If it's a right thing, it will make sense. If it's mm -hmm. a wrong thing, I will feel in my gut that it's um, a nonsense. It's it's nonsense. For example, like irrelevant or like doesn't make sense, uh, and like and it's a bad thing. So yes, yes, I agree big time. All right, girl, Madison, I appreciate 
uh, the conversation with you was very valuable. I learned a lot of new things, actually, new thoughts and new perspective. Um, I I admire your actual listening to opinions and people's uh, previous experiences in life because each one of us is different. And even if me and you were born like on the same day, on the same hour, on the same hour, like maybe on the, in the same country, but we will have like totally different lives and experiences. And seeing it from Madison's perspective is amazing, interesting, and admirable at the same time. Thank you. Yes. Yes, mashallah. Lastly, I want to say, Madison, that mashallah, you're so brave because you took the step of, first of all, converting to Islam. Um, you did the thing that people were like interested about it, but they were like far away from it because they don't want to try it because they are afraid um, of like an idea they heard, ideas they heard about before or like um, a feeling, sort of feeling they didn't want to feel when they convert to Islam or maybe an experience uh, to experience after they convert to Islam. But mashallah, you took this step. And is it that scary actually? Maybe before I took the step, I was very worried like, oh, how are my coworkers going to treat me? How are my friends going to react? How, how is my family going to react? But when you have something that you genuinely believe in, me personally, I do not care what anyone thinks about me. There's a there's a few people here or there that I, like if they didn't if they didn't approve of me, I would be like, ah. But my family consistently is kind of disapproved of me, so I wouldn't. Yeah. I do care what they think of me, but I don't take it too seriously when they're like, "You're ruining your life." I've done it before, <laughs> but. Yeah. When you take that step, like if you're watching this and you're considering it, you're afraid of how other people are going to react, I think you just need to do it. You will be shocked. A lot of people, even if they don't approve of it, they'll still smile to your face. You'll be none the wiser if they are weirded out by you, but you will have an amazing faith. This community of people is genuinely a family. When they say, please reach out to me, I will help you, they mean it. It's genuine. I've been told like, oh, you can reach out to me for anything by people before. Well, they didn't mean they didn't mean it, but this is a, this is genuinely a family full of people who want to see you succeed and they want to see you be happy and they want to see you have strength in your faith and they want to see you learn and they just want the best for you. And I'm not saying everybody, but a majority of the people and it's enough to make it worth it. I think take that step for sure. Amazing. So, Maggie, what is your last words for a person? Either it's a boy or a girl, uh, but they are like they ha they are having the thought in their minds of converting, mm -hmm. uh, but like they are quite afraid. They only need like a little push. So, what would you say? All it took for me was to talk to a Muslim. If you know one, talk to one. You can talk to me. I have a lot of messages, but I'll try. Um, just find somebody who is genuinely in love with their faith. And I think that person can help push you a little bit. Not, they don't, they, I was never forced to do this, but when you talk to actual Muslims, they give you the information you ask for and they yeah. write a trumpet for you. They want you to make a choice that you're comfortable with. But I think that would be the most useful thing. Amazing. Considering it. Gorgeous. And the last thing, what would you say to our generation, maybe a bit older, maybe a bit younger, um, of what's happening in Gaza, what to listen to, what to see, what not to see, how would you analyze the situation and so on? Um, my typical advice for myself, at least, um, if it seems too easy to come to that conclusion, it's probably not the truth. Do research. Um, don't just believe what is given to you simply. You need to actually look at both sides. And sometimes you will find that, okay, you started out believing something, you are wrong. And that's okay. You can be wrong and you can change your mind. I think a lot of people I find, like, okay, Maybe I was wrong, but I'm too embarrassed to say that. So I'm just going to get nasty and dig my feet in or dig ego. my heel. Yes, ego. It's okay. It is okay to be wrong. And it is 
even more admirable for you to be wrong and say, I was wrong. I was so wrong. Let me change my mind really quick. That is so admirable. That's so mature. I think as a society, sure, we need to get more comfortable with being wrong. I appreciate that. Such a wise person you are at Madison, honestly speaking. Thank you so much. I had so much fun. And I really hope that we get into another discussion, inshallah, very, very slowly.